come to you in prayer asking for change. In a time of confusion and disagreement, we ask you for direction to lead us to heal our differences and come together in unity. Our country suffers from a deadly disease that only you can cure and heal those that are sick. We ask your comfort for those grieving for the loss of a loved one. For those facing the loss of business, show them the way to rebuild and move forward. Show us compassion for others and lead us to help our community recover and grow stronger. We ask for protection, health, and safety of our employees, our families, and our residents. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen. First item on agenda is uh, approval of the minutes. Consider approval of the January 19th, 2021 regular and closed meeting minutes. Move approval. Second. Motion by Councilmember Member Hughes, second by Council Member Aldridge. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Agenda adjustments. I want to add an item after number 11 to discuss some comments about our electrical rates. So moved. Motion by Council Member Hall, second by Council Member Aldridge. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. I have no unannounced allegations. Administrator reports a request for a change to contract two, phase two, to utilize unspent project funds. Adam Packer is here. If we have questions, if you come forward, our make a presentation, please. Uh, yes, good evening, Mayor and members of council. Uh, we do not have a, a formal presentation tonight. <clears throat> uh, what we are um, have brought before you uh, tonight at the request of your staff and with our recommendation is using the very last uh, of the phase two project funds to address an issue at the wastewater treatment plant. <clears throat> Uh, you have two, for those of you who have visited that plant, or if you recall, at the older part of the plant, if you, uh, it has a berm around it. So during heavy storm events, there are two pumps that are used to dewater the site uh, to keep the water level from rising. Uh, those pumps have been in service for uh, probably pushing 70 years now. One of them is not working. The other one works but is a little bit uh, at risk and so uh, we have received approval from the funding agency if you so desire to use the last funds from the phase two project to replace one of those pumps uh, in our opinion i think your staff would support this that this is something you would need to budget for regardless in coming budget years and uh, so if you so choose you can include this uh, in the project funds as a change order to the construction contract and this would be something we would do regardless of what decision council makes on the method of how we treat solids later. That, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is correct. Yes. But it's not related to the treatment process. It's more of a uh, just general maintenance for the site. Yes. Council, have any questions? Move approval. Second. Motion by council member Hall to approve the change. Second by council member Dry. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Thank you, Mayor. Number five, your municipal calendar is in your agenda. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Moving on to the consent agenda. Number six, ordinance 2104 is to appropriate CARES funding in the Department of Public Housing and Insurance proceeds in the general fund. Number seven is ordinance 2105 to amend the assistance to firefighters grant budget. And number eight is confirmation of the ADDC Board of Directors. And number nine is a proclamation for the National Future Leaders of America, Phi Beta Lambda Week. Mayor, if I just may, um, the calendar for the ADDC Board of Directors is January 26, 2020. I think that's just an error, but 2021, but it's showing 2020 on the attachment. Thank you. I think that is uh, an error. Move approved. Uh, oh. I just, I would like to pull off the, the PBL. I'd like to pull off number nine just to, for it to be read, just because it mentions some folks within okay. our community that I think need that recognition. Mr. Alvarez, is your move to approve with the exception of number nine? Okay. Second. Motion by Councilman Hollander. Second by Councilmember Townsend. Yeah, thank you. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. 
Movement number nine, the proclamation for the uh, Phi Beta Lambda Week. Ms. Hall, would you read that? I will indeed. Before I start this, though, I would like to publicly recognize Dan Hazlett. Um, Mr. Hazlett has been a, a fixture at Stanley Community College, even when it was Stanley Technical College. Um, and he has been the energy um, and the excitement um, behind many, many, many students over on the hill who have gone through PBL at Stanley Community College. Uh, Council Member Townsend and myself at different times, yes, me before you, Dexter, because I'm a little bit older, uh, we're both involved in this organization. And Dan Hazlett not only has done things on the Hill for Stanley Community College for that particular chapter, but he has served in the role, as, in leadership roles for both the state chapter and the national chapter for PBL for numerous years. Um, whenever he reached out to me about a month ago, he asked if I would do this, and because of COVID, nobody would be here. And I, he even reached out to me again over the weekend, and I said, yes, it's on there, and we got it taken care of. And uh, in my response to him, he said, well, I'm working on the state conference as we speak. So um, just a public recognition, and he has no idea that I'm doing this, to Dan Hazlett and to the hours, many, many, many hours that he has given unselfishly to this organization for many, many years. <coughs> Proclamation National FBLA PBL Week, February 8th through 12th of 2021. Future Business Leaders of America, Phi Beta Lambda. Whereas Phi Beta Lambda and Future Business Leaders of America develop confident, aggressive business leadership, whereas PBL and FBLA strengthen the confidence of students in themselves and their work, whereas PBL and FBLA encourage members in the development of individual projects which contribute to the improvement of home, business, and community, Whereas PBL and FBLA develop character, prepare students for useful citizenship, and foster patriotism. Whereas PBL and FBLA encourage efficient money management. Whereas PBL and FBLA encourage scholarship and promote school loyalty. Whereas PBL and FBLA assist students in the establishment of occupational goals. Whereas PBL and FBLA facilitate the transition from school to work. Be it resolved that Albemarle, North Carolina participate in the national designation of Phi Beta Lambda Future Business Leaders of America Week, February 8th through the 12th of 2021. In doing so, the City Council members applaud the aforementioned goals and recognize the continued contribution and successes of the Phi Beta Lambda chapters at Stanley Community College and Pfeiffer University. Particular recognition is given to Allison Smith for serving as the State PBL Officer this year the council members applaud the PBL chapters on their awards at the 2020 state and national PBL competitions, especially to Stanley Community College, for being named a state and national Gold Seal chapter, as well as winning first place in the state for its local chapter annual business report, and first in the state and third in the nation for its parliamentary procedure team. Special recognition is also given to Mr. Lee Pickler Stanley Community College graduate and owner of Scan Online, who was selected at the State PBL Business of the Year for 2020 and one of two recognized at the national level. Council members also wish to also wish all current PBL students a success as they prepare for participation in the 2021 State Leadership Conference and competitive events. These chapters have conducted programs and projects that have highlighted and have brought recognition to their respective campuses, Albemarle, and Stanley County. Most importantly, they have provided the opportunity for leadership development that has resulted in outstanding citizens and business leaders. Albemarle City Council congratulates Phi Beta Lambda and the Secondary Division of Future Business Leaders of America and are pleased to salute them publicly during this week of national emphasis. Thank you all very much for doing this, and I will hand deliver this um, probably tomorrow to, to Dan Hazler. So thank you. I'll never have a motion to approve. So move. Motion by Council Member Aldridge, second by Council Member Lauer. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Under new business, consider amending the city policy to allow for remote public participation for quasi judicial proceedings. 
while I <clears throat> probably don't agree that we need to do this forever, I think under COVID right now, we probably don't have a whole lot of choice but to offer this. But I think after COVID, I would rather see most quasi-judicial with everybody standing here in front of us rather than just hearing that by phone. But I would agree that at this time we need to approve this if council so chooses. So, so would you recommend that we approve it like say a one year time frame and then come back and revisit it? That's totally up to council or you can approve it and with a date or without a date, totally up to you. And the only thing we're doing is changing, if I, if I look at it correctly, in subsection six. When we originally adopted this, I don't think you could do quasi-judicial, but that has now been changed. And uh, we do need to allow quasi-judicial during COVID. And so just for clarification to the public, sure. this would be anyone, anyone wanting to present before us, not just us as the body that would be hearing the information. Is that right? Wait a minute, Stop. Back, back up now and tell me, are you talking about anything or just quasi judicial? Quasi judicial. If they have standing. If they have standing, they, they still have to meet the qualifications. Yes. And again, I'm playing devil with this because there is a time that they have to be sworn. And they would still be sworn. Is that correct? That is correct. And with the electronic visitation, particularly with quasi judicial proceedings, beforehand they'll have to sign an affidavit saying that they swore that it. They agree to the remote uh, participation just, in, just so they can't challenge due process considerations after the fact. So there's a little more paperwork to go along with it, but all the particular elements will be met. Okay, so with that, if we were to approve this as it is right here, is that something that we need to have within the body, the policy or the procedures that we would need to follow if they decided they were going to do it <coughs> this way, they have to do da 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 da? I mean, is that something we need to include within this? Because I didn't see it, any of that procedural kind of thing in there. So it doesn't have to be included in this. Um, it can be just something that HRT does before they agree to let it Okay. This is just allowing that to happen, and the procedural day-to-day uh, -day elements will be handled by planning. Okay. Okay. So the swearing in and all that would be done previous after to they it. came and they wanted to do um, the project you did. Correct. They would do it previous with prior to prior to okay. prior to the right. meeting. I, I you know I agree that. I don't like to do it, but we we probably need to, but I would love to put a time on it, and if we need to come back and look at it, we just do that. Mayor, if I may, in the policy in section seven, it puts stipulations on when participation can be provided publicly, and I think it clarifies that it can only be during kind of a state of emergency, a situation such as this, so that could be accepted in lieu of a specific time frame, so we don't have to come back and revise it and close it. That's good. That's okay. State of emergency exists. And it, the state of emergency still exists right now. Right. Until which time it's lifted. I was looking for conditions on how far in advance do they have to notify the city clerk or mm, the city good. Um, Maybe I'm overlooking it, but do we have a spe specified time? So planning handles all the applicants that come for HRC, so that's more of a staff item. Okay, Okay. Further questions? Motion. Motion by Councilman Member Hall to approve. Second. Second by Council Member Townsend. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. One, one against. Motion carries. <clears throat> Number 11, <coughs> Montgomery Avenue Road improvements. You have in your agenda a statement from our public works director on what it would cost to do Montgomery Avenue road improvements. It is possible. Council, I guess, needs to decide if this is more of a priority than paving roads is, which I can only speak for myself. I think we have many roads that need to be addressed before we do this, but uh, what's Council's thoughts? I agree with you. I agree with you. Do we have the capability to track the count I mean, sure. at some point to sure. see if it's even warranted? Right. Yes, we can do that. I don't know if the council wanted to do that. 
at this point. <clears throat> Somewhat related to that, I talked to somebody associated with the business there on Montgomery Avenue that we talked about at the last meeting, and he said they have on average about two trucks a day coming and going, not counting dumpster service, but just in terms of delivery. It can fluctuate, but it's about uh, 10 a week. If that, if that provides any perspective on, on traffic going to that facility. Comments? Is there any way, that, uh, I'm just wondering, you know, it looks like the problem area is Montgomery Avenue, uh, they're, they're in Mall Springs. I just wondered if there's any chance that we could speak to the business owner up there and request that the trucks use Ridge Street instead of Mall Springs. I don't know if that would eliminate the problem there where they're trying to make that turn. Well, if, you come, if you come up two blocks, it'd be up basically going up two blocks. If we I, think the the trash, trash, I think the trash, I think the solid waste collection, trash trucks, waste management trucks do use ridge. But I'm talking about, I'm talking about trucks or the 18 wheeler trucks that going into the industry of their business. And the, the person I spoke to said he would remind folks there to use different routes. Now he did say that, you know, I think as we talked about at the last meeting, that what will happen is, is somebody is maybe not familiar with it, they'll put it into a GPS system and that's the route they'll take. But they said they would work with us and try to let people know, drivers know the best they could to take other routes. Yeah. So, so we actually don't take any action. Council doesn't want to have any motion. We will not take any action. We will move forward. And I think this is good information for us moving forward, particularly with um, the next two weeks with looking at our goals and those kinds of things for the next year. I think, I mean, we, we know that paving anywhere is going to be going up. I mean, the cost of that is going to go up or is going up. <clears throat> but I appreciate the proactive slash reactive um, work that has been done about making contacts. Um, with the, with the <coughs> okay, and then we'll move on to the item that was added for the agenda adjustment. I think all of us have probably had a lot of contacts over the last couple of weeks about utility bills and have asked that, many of them asked that council discuss that. And that's what we want to do tonight is discuss utility bills. They are higher this month, two reasons. Number one, the weather is colder. But number two, because of the holidays, our number of days on the bills are longer. So the bill, there's more days in the bills this month. So I understand that too decreasing. Most of the problems are coming from higher usage. Unfortunately, the city has no way of addressing usage. Usage is determined by obviously the weather, but it's also determined by the house, the appliances in the house, the heat system, the hot water heater, kind of electronics you have in a house, and what the preferences are of the resident, well, how they keep their house, maintain their house, especially temperature. We have no way of controlling that. We can't control usage. All council can do, and I think the city and council has done a great job over the last several years, is trying to lower our rates as much as possible. Over the last six years, we've lowered our rates eight and a half percent. And hopefully we'll be continuing to be able to lower some in the future. But it all depends on what our wholesale rate is that we get right before our budget every year, and we will not know what it'll be until we adopt our budget. So council doesn't have a whole lot of options, and they can't do anything with usage. I would encourage people, if they're having a, a usage issue, and most of them are seeing increase in average daily use, especially for January. That's something we see every year because it's a colder month typically. I would encourage them to try to have an energy audit of their house and see if there's anything they can do to help decrease their energy bills. Council, have any comments? Uh, Mayor, if, if I may suggest or may make this uh, comment, I'm not sure with the, the pandemic we're going through right now, I know a lot more folks are working from home. I know some folks have short and work schedules. I know a lot of our students have been doing remote learning. I just wonder if, if, that, statistic, if that situation combined with the, the cold temperatures and things of that nature could be having an adverse effect on these, on these energy or on these power bills and, and driving them up to a certain extent. Well, to that, to that comment, uh, folks that are working from home now, if they're working from home totally, 
and they've not been in the past, then their house, they don't, you know, that would be, that would be a, a play into it. I will say that um, in my talking with people and trying to not defend things, but just giving them information, I basically have stood and will stand by there are three variables. Um, and um, one of those, like you said, is the length of time in a billing cycle. And as I indicated to somebody just yesterday, during the months of November, December, and January, not only is it colder out there, but the city recognizes holidays, as many holidays between those three months as the city recognizes almost within the rest of this, the calendar year. No other time are there multiple days off other than Thanksgiving and Christmas, and then in January, both Martin Luther King and New Year's Day. So that automatically throws off folks at the meter readers, and it throws off billing, and it, it already throws that off, and, and then additionally continues to lengthen that time. If in a regular month you've got 28 to 30 days, and then you've got a, um, a bill that's 35 or more days, that's already 20% more. And I've really tried to say that to people, as well as uh, what you just indicated, Mr. Aldridge, that more folks are staying at home all the time and working from home. Um, and just the usage itself. Um, one of the things when I got my very first contact, must have been now a week or 10 days ago, I don't know, I sent something to, to Michael and to Nikki and to Judy, and I think you all were copied on the rates um, of comparable towns. Some of those towns were other electricities towns, um, and then there were some private companies, REA and Duke, about what their rates are. I would continue to remind people as well Having, being a part of Electric Cities and having our own folks, whether it's the meter readers or the linemen, when something breaks down here in the city of Albemarle or with any of our customers, the time it takes for folks to get energy and electricity restored is minutes compared to hours with other, with other um, utility companies. So you know, there's a lot of factors there. Um, but I think that individually, just as you all have indicated, those are the major ones right now. And the time. And we all, like you said, we always have it. And the main reason, in my opinion, other than usage, is the number of days in a cycle. I still think, um, I, I, and I appreciate what the city been doing to be proactive as far as putting information on the city's Facebook page and um, I assume on the website. Uh, that information that they put out last week about over the past six years, how the city have uh, reduced electric rates by eight and a half percent. I think information like that is good. Um, I also, you know, we all look at the social media posts and things of that nature and see what the concerns and the vibe of the community is. Um, maybe we can continue to do such things as one thing, for instance, that I constantly see and hear is we're paying for them lights downtown. Oh, you know? yeah. And we've heard that for years now. But what we need to do is put that information out there. Uh, I think like what we uh, think a year, last year maybe, um, somebody gave us the information about on the average how much it costs to operate all those LED lights in downtown, things of that nature. Um, I believe will go a long way, you know, and just keeping the general public informed. Uh, for example, I went back and looked on the November bill. So that's the first one I found. It was 29 days. And I looked at the one I got actually today, I believe, 35 days. So that's an extra week. So, and the good thing about, I like about our statements is you can go back a year and no matter how many days are on this cycle, you can see a year ago how many kilowatts you used per day then and how many you use per day now. And if it's more, your bill's gonna be more. So that's always try to keep those statements, you know, for a year or so, so I can refer back to and see why my bill went up. And I think it's important, and that's what we're trying to do is, the city can't control how much power you use. All we control, control is the price 
in the payment. That's all we can control. We can't control how much power a house uses. That's totally on the resident and the weather. As, as a business owner, the 35 days has impacted a lot of people in business. And, you know, if they didn't look at their bill to see that it was 35, you don't know. Uh, I have another house, hadn't been in it in, in a month. Uh, the water's off, the, the heat's on 64. Typically it's 125, it was 280. But again, it, it, the, it constantly ran even at uh, 64 degrees. And as a business, uh, one, you're, hopefully you're lucky to, to be open. There are other, there's a lot that are not able to open or run regular, regular business hours. And you know, those extra five days or six days make a huge difference wow. on a, uh, a, a large cons uh, a business that all of a sudden it's, it's like a landfall. It hits you and you want to know where in the world did this come from? But again, it's the awareness and of everything that, that you folks have talked about here tonight. And we're not out of it yet. We're going to experience more before we ever see it get better again. And I look at it as if we work together, communicate, there's nothing that we can't solve. Uh, we, should be able, we shouldn't be getting upset about the things that we can't control, only the things that we can influence. So therefore, uh, you know, just be patient with what's going on. Uh, say your prayers every night and hopefully things are going to get better before they get worse. You know, Council will keep this in mind and we may discuss it some more at another time. Okay, moving into, you want to come around the table. Uh, Mr. Council. <coughs> Mr. Alford. Uh, yeah, real quick, John. I just wanted to congratulate and uh, uh, Brandon Bean, uh, local Albemarle, Stanley County native, uh, who is now uh, who is currently the uh, general manager for the Buffalo Bills. He had a pretty pretty strong run with Carolina Panthers, and he's been up in Buffalo as the general manager for several years now. Just got a contract extension, but doing a really really phenomenal job. As as you football fans know, they made it to the AFC Championship game and. Uh, Almost got to the to the Super Bowl this coming weekend, but uh, fell fell a little bit short. So I just want to say congratulations to Brandon. He's received several several awards this year, and uh, keep up the good work. And uh, for that matter, we've got several people in our community that are in the NFL. I think probably more so than I ever remember. So just uh, it's good to see local folks uh, doing really well. So I'm sure that. Ms. Hughes. Um, I just had a question for Keith. I know there was a, a session today for the ADVC. <coughs> And I was real curious to know how that went and how many came and what was the focus? Uh, Councilwoman, we, uh, uh, Joy is working on the number of people that uh, appeared on Facebook Live and Zoom, so I don't okay. have those numbers tonight, but I'll get those to you okay. before the end of the week. Okay. Um, I thought all the speakers did a great job. Uh, there's probably, as we did an assessment after the event today, uh, there's a few items that I've directed staff to improve on, and, and we will improve those. And, uh, but all in all, I was... Uh, what was uh, the pleased. objective, I guess, of the... Yeah, the overall objective, the, the main point I wanted to bring across to the business community, the business owners, and really the citizens, is that uh, we're here to listen, number one, and I want them more engaged, more involved, and to uh, uh, implement their ideas and suggestions for our economic development plan. Uh, as I've listened and learned over the last three and a half months since being here, um, a lot of feedback about the, the direction of economic development and downtown and Main Street programs is more one-sided from the city staff directing it more to the, the business owners and property owners and not enough listening and input from them. So that was the okay. primary goal, but also to bring in the allies that we work with to make sure that uh, the business owners and property owners understood the resources that were there and <clears throat> what direction we're going in to support their efforts. Okay. Yeah, I'd, I'd be very interested to hear how, how many attended. And you yeah, we're, we're, we're doing that assessment now, and okay. I'm going to have a full report to you all by the end of the week. Okay. Yes, Sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Treasurer? I don't have anything. Ms. Hall? 
just I guess and part of will you bring to us the ideas from all of that too? Ideas of the whole everything when you give us a report. Sure. I'm not sure. The feedback you. from the feedback from today's retreat. Will that be all in a in some type that, of that will be in the report. We've uh, we're getting feedback from each of the participants as well as the staff that were involved. Okay. Uh, so that's all part Just of that. Just FYI, I tried twice to get on, and I couldn't. If I, my computer were still on at home, it probably would still say that the host is uh, waiting to let you in. Yeah, so. the, the Facebook Live worked well. Good. The Zoom, not so well. Uh, there were some um, technical issues there. Uh, in talking with Owen, who did a great job uh, in bringing that back online, uh, so he did Yeoman's work to get that done. Uh, this is the second event we've had at the theater. Um, one of my recommendations coming out of this ass assessment will be to uh, possibly evaluate the, that facility and maybe spend some funds to bring the AV system back up to, uh, to a standard where you could have uh, you know, Zoom meetings and other meetings there uh, for that purpose. So, uh, may need to be some upgrades to the technology in that facility to if we're going to continue to have these types of events in that in that facility so okay and, and that comes from speaking with us <coughs> and lisa as well so thank you thank you um just a reminder that this week and next week i believe waste management is no noting to residents isn't it this week and next week about their changing is <coughs> or is it this week they're notice, notifying people to start next week. I can't remember. I think that's right. I, yeah. I know cards to those that were changing, their, their day was, or their week was changing, were probably sent out two, three weeks ago. Right, so, so those folks who did not get a card will continue to be on their, on their what they've been using. I just think there's been some, and you know, some people don't depend on social media. Some people just get, depend on what they see in their hands. Um, there was an issue today, and I have spoken with the, the uh, manager, and I've spoken with the police chief about um, parking downtown for Pfeiffer. So if you get any comments, and I'm just saying this to my fellow council members, every parking space downtown is available for whoever. There's no, nowhere on any street on 3rd Street, on 4th Street, on Main, on North, there are none that cannot be used by the public. Therefore, they, can, they all can be used by our students at Pfeiffer. So um, just because a parking spot's in front of your house does not mean that parking spot is yours. Part of Main. Part of Main. From, from 3rd Street up and back toward town, toward the square, uh -huh. and 2nd Street and the Main down to the church is got two-hour parking. Everything else, it's no timing. No, no, well, and I didn't even address the timing, but for Pfeiffer students, right, besides, uh, but what I'm indicating is in, during the resi in residential areas, just because there's a spot in front of your house does not mean it's yours. Um, it's, it is all public, and uh, I don't want Pfeiffer to feel like that. I want them to feel welcome and a part of what's going on, and this just, it really bothered me this morning. Um, throw something out for, your consideration, and I know we do not have a uh, glass ball to see in the future, but we have an opportunity to have some live music at City Lake Park. Uh, first of all, let me tell you that we are doing Food Truck Fridays at City Lake Park, March through, help me Bill and Dexter, March through October, isn't that right? Yes. Once a month, um, and we're going to do that, uh, even with COVID. Um, people just can come, they can get their food and leave or go wherever. But we've had an opportunity to have some live music on April the 9th, which will be our food truck Friday. Friday. It is the Friday after Easter. Uh, I knew you were going to ask that. Um, I'm just very concerned. Do we do that? Um, I'm, if we do this, I, I mean, I have, I have arranged for the band to be here, and I've just, uh, I've told Lisa that I would work on raising the money to get this band here uh, if the city doesn't have the money for it. Um, 
people are dying to do stuff. They're dying to be out and go and, and enjoy the outside. I just don't know if we need to commit to something or if we can commit to something that soon. I have no idea. I mean, the governor's got us in this. How, how soon do you have to have it? Oh, I don't have to. I mean, no, I don't. I mean, I basically have said to these folks, um, you know, they've said to me, you've got us if you, if you want us and told me how much I needed to find to be able to bring them. Um, and I'm sure, if, you know, even if at the end of March, well, no, probably the middle of March, I probably... The second meeting in March, we can make a decision? Uh, probably. Do I... there, there is a limit. Yeah. yeah, there's still a limit. And, you know, like I've said, we cannot, we, the city, cannot do something that's going to bring that many more people together. We just can't do it. Um, and we don't know, you know at the end of March if it's going to be extended or not. So, I mean, the end of February if it will be extended or not. We'll look about it again. Uh, and in the meantime, if anybody's got any companies that they have out there that would like to bring a name, uh, name time band or big time band, let me know. They can help me sponsor or help. Um, and I don't know if anybody else saw, um, this weekend we've got some, not all of our flags are the same. Flags at Courthouse Square have been on uh, half staff for some time. I don't know if they've been fixed today or not. But I didn't know why they were half staff and nowhere else in town. Police Department, City Hall, all of our fire departments have all been up. So I don't know what's going on with that. I just would like first, whatever, whatever, whoever's, um, uh, authorization we do it by I hope that we do it at the same time for all of them um, and I guess my last comment would just be to Nikki and I should have asked her about this Nikki you've asked us to look at some pages getting ready for next week yes ma'am and so, okay. it looks like to me that the only thing that we would have anything to look at would be pages seven eight and nine is that correct in terms of responding back to my email, yes. Okay, thank you very much. I just want to make sure that my cohorts up here are on the same page. Thank you, thank you very much. That's all. Okay. Mr. Dry? No, sir. Ms. Lowe? No. Mr. Whitman? Uh, the only thing I would see is I did, uh, was on Facebook this morning to see the presentations, and I thought it was very good. Um, so don't know how many people were on the online watching that but I thought the information that was put out to um, whoever especially the downtown businesses on what is going on with the city some of the projects plus business center plus Pfeiffer's presentation I thought it was all very very good and the technical difficulties weren't that bad we got over them. Uh, the other thing I've mentioned is we uh, went out, my wife and I went up to Chuck Morgan Park this weekend for a walk and we pulled this kind of humorous I thought we pulled into the street pull up to through the park and there were cars everywhere and we went all the way to the end turned around and came back there were like 90 cars up there. and we looked around and didn't see anybody it was like it was weird we saw maybe half a dozen people and then we saw the sign it was a disc golf tournament so when we went walking we could hear them all <laughs> out through the woods so we saw tags from Virginia, uh, from Florida. I don't know if they came just for that or not. I wouldn't think so, but there were that many people yeah. up there at that park. They were. So, you know, those things, the one here at City Lake, Oak Borough, Baden, not sure if there's any more or not. But those things have quite a draw. And uh, which brings me to another thing. I've got a few things I want to mention during our budget session on some possible deferred maintenance out right there. See if there's anything we can do about a couple of items. But uh, I just thought I'd bring that up. We just happened to go up there and I was, I was shocked there was that many people up there. That's it. Want to have anything else? Okay, I'll entertain a motion that we go into closed session. Pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143 318 11 A 1 3 four and five to prevent disclosure of information that is privileged or confidential pursuant to the law of this state legal
to consult with the city attorney to discuss real estate and economic development. So moved. Motion by Council Member Aldridge. Second. Second by Council Member Dry. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. <coughs>